Welcome everyone to this video about the top 10 nastiest chemical reactions in my collection. Let's begin. This one is only here because of its reputation and it's potassium cyanide. Potassium cyanide about 100 milligrams if I remember correctly can kill but lower doses can also kill you and if you mix it with acid you get deadly hydrogen cyanide which is even more toxic. The second chemical is mercury chloride. I could have put up many more mercury salts here but I am going to focus on this single one because if I put the other ones up I would have way more than 10 chemicals here. It can badly impact your brain and your kidneys and can lead to serious long-term damage. Number 7 is another cyanide but it's higher on the totem pole because this is tetraethylammonium cyanide and despite being as toxic as cyanide it can be absorbed into your body much more easily. If you spill this whole bottle onto your hands it can likely kill you whereas touching potassium cyanide, even though you shouldn't do it, would unlikely be fatal. The next one is strychnine. It's also only here because of its reputation and I have a bottle of strychnine nitrate here. And about 30 milligrams up to 120 milligrams can kill, but even doses as low as 15 milligrams are known to kill. Despite being widely known as a poison for killing people in novels, it would be one of the worst poisons you could choose because strychnine has a tertiary amine in the molecule and it is so bitter that you can taste it at concentrations way below a fatal level. It's indeed so bitter that you can taste it at concentrations of 1 to 130,000 which is absolutely mind-blowing to me. Let me pack it back up. I'm eventually going to show you a few reactions with strychnine but yeah. The next one is thallium. It can accumulate in your body. I don't know how this poison works. I don't know how much of it is deadly, but thallium is pretty bad. So I also have a bottle of thallium sulfate and this is elemental thallium. In chemistry it's used for oxyphylations, which I'm eventually going to show to you. Our next chemical is arsenic trioxide. It's an arsenic salt and the interesting fact about it is that kings in the past were often poisoned by it and thus they gradually increased the dose of this poison on, their, on themselves, they call it myhridotism, and they gradually became so immune to it that they could take literal grams of this without dying. Higher up is another arsenic salt. I could have put up sodium arsenate, which is also worse than arsenic trioxide, but that's not the point. This is sodium methyl arsenate. It's high up in the list because it's organic and can thus be more easily absorbed and it's thus more damaging to you. Now I would be fine to work with all of these chemicals, but two out of these three on the top, two of them I would be very reluctant to work with. Let's continue. Number three, this is dimethyl sulfate. It's a potent alkylating agent, it's volatile, and it's extremely toxic. It's actually so toxic that it was used as a chemical weapon in World War I, but they ended up not using it anymore because they found more efficient stuff, more effective. Most often you can use other alkylating agents, but I am eventually going to use it for one specific reaction because even though I will be reluctant to work with, I will eventually just use it because Wrapping with dimethyl sulfate greatly improves the yields in this case and I simply have to show you this interesting chemical. Higher up on this list is another chemical which I'm happy to work with. This is atropine sulfate. I'm going to take it out of the baggie because unlike mercury salts it will not accumulate in my body and I'm thus happy to touch it because a few micrograms of this, if this bottle is contaminated on the, on the outside, will not hurt. Atropine sulfate is a nicely white powder. I have even more of this stuff and it's actually one of the most useful poisons. It's used to dilate pupils while doing certain medical operations on your eyes, but it's also used to treat poisonings with certain nerve agents. For example, if you were to be poisoned with VX, sarin or some other nerve agents, doesn't work with every nerve agent but it's used for many nerve agents. You get atropine as an antidote and it works pretty effectively. Now to number one. The most dangerous chemical in my collection. 
this one I'm actually very reluctant to work with because this stuff is nasty. It's so nasty that I packed it up really well. You have this plastic tube, then there's some cotton in it. Let me take it out. I wrapped something up in tissue paper. It's in a plastic bag and in this plastic bag we have a glass ampule. Take a look at this. It's this green slimy looking compound and it's called osmium tetroxide. Osmium tetroxide is volatile and despite sounding pretty nerd and safe, it's one of the nastiest ones. It can easily get into the air and in chemistry it's used for dihydroxylations which are also going to happen in your body and I will eventually show you how to make tartaric acid from another chemical which name I forget using osmium tetroxide. But I am going to be well prepared for this reaction because this stuff is very nasty. If you liked today's video and if you would like to see further chemistry videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe and of course on the main channel you are still going to see the usual chemistry content. Bye!